So some of you have probably watched my... Have, probably. You've probably watched my tutorials. So some of you may have watched my tutorial videos, and you've probably noticed that most of the songs I teach are technical or progressive metal songs. The reason I started making those lesson videos in the first place was because uh, learning those songs is not an easy task. Those are songs that I liked and I wanted to learn how to play them on guitar. And after going through so much effort, I wanted some kind of recording in case I ever forgot how to play the songs. And then I could easily just tell myself, hey, here's how you play that song. And I also figured that there were probably other people out there who had the skill to play the songs, but maybe didn't really have the ear or the ability to figure out all the notes or even just the patience to, um, to go through that process. So what I'd like to do today is share with you some of the tools and techniques that I use to learn difficult songs like that. That way, if there's a song you wanna learn that I don't have a lesson for, you can kinda of go through this method and hopefully figure it out yourself. The same method works for anything. So even if you're just trying to learn a hard rock song or punk rock or, or whatever genre, um, you can use this method to help you learn how to play the songs. Now for this video, I'm probably gonna be referring mostly to guitar, but this method can be used for any instrument. So the first thing you should always do is check to see if there is a lesson video. And I know that might seem kind of obvious, but it's very possible to just get caught up trying to learn this song and not even check to see if the artist has put out some kind of lesson video. I remember several years ago when I was learning how to play the song My Curse by Killswitch Engage. I went through a certain method to pick out all the notes and I did all this work and I figured out how to learn the song and then later I found out on YouTube there was a tutorial of Adam D from Killswitch Engage teaching how to play the riffs from My Curse. Now the cool thing was um, what he showed was very similar to what I figured out so that was kind of you know reassuring to me and my um, ability to, to pick up on that but you know it would have saved me a lot of effort if I had just looked to see if there was a video in the first place and that's obviously going to be your best source is learning from the person who wrote the songs and even if they don't teach the whole song if they just teach you like a few of the riffs that can give you a lot of context clues to learn the rest of the song now some people post lesson videos including myself and to be honest I don't typically trust lesson videos um, that's why I do the playthroughs so that you can watch and determine for yourself how accurate you think my lesson is going to be. That way you don't have to watch this lesson and kind of get halfway through it and realize this guy does not know what he's doing. So it, it depends on who's making the lesson video, but I really only trust lesson videos if they're coming from the artists themselves. So you've checked to see if there are lesson videos. The next thing you can do is look for live performances. Now when I say live performances, I don't just mean at a concert. Sometimes uh, guitarists will do like clinics or product demonstrations or things like that and um, a lot of times the camera is focused on their guitar playing so you can kind of watch their fingers and pick up on what they're doing. And YouTube has a very handy tool um, for picking out the notes and, and the music with their slow-mo feature. If you click on the gear icon for a YouTube video, that's the settings feature, and you go to speed, you can adjust the speed and slow it down. And what's cool is it actually preserves the pitch of the notes. The only thing is since it's stretching it out, there is gonna be a little bit of digital distortion, um, but for the most part, you can hear uh, the notes pretty clearly. And it's a very useful tool to kind of like see where their hands are going, where they might be fretting, and, um, and sort of use your ear to pick out what notes they're actually playing. And many times when I'm trying to learn a song, I'll have several tabs opened up of like different angles, different performances and stuff, and I'll kind of go back and forth. Because um, sometimes if you're looking at live footage, you're not always going to see their hands for the whole song. They might turn away, or the person holding the camera might look somewhere else. So I always kind of check a lot of sources and try to narrow it down to what I think that person is doing. The next method you can try using is the video game method using something like Guitar Hero or Rock Band. Um, believe it or not, I've actually learned several songs with the help of those games. Earlier when I mentioned that I learned how to play the song My Curse by Killswitch Engage, I actually learned that from Guitar Hero 3. Those games feature a practice mode which will actually isolate the instrument and uh, allow you to slow down and play the notes. So what you want to do is go to the practice mode, you want to make sure you put it on expert mode so that you're going to be hitting all of the notes and then slow it down and just play the first few notes, pause the game, pick up your real guitar and see if you can find those few notes. Another method which you can try using and probably the one that most people try to do is look up tabs. Now I'm actually very skeptical of tabs. I almost never use them. I just don't trust them. Unless it's transcribed from the actual artist, I, I rather figure out the song for myself. I don't really trust anyone else to do it. But there have been times where I've used tabs, um, especially when I first started learning 
uh, a lot of technical progressive songs. The song prequel to the sequel by Between the Buried and Me was just really difficult. I really wanted to learn how to play it and I looked up some tabs, but if I ever use tabs, I'm always very critical. I'll kind of listen to it and I'll sort of learn it and then I'll always check back to the actual song to see if it actually fits. If you are going to use tabs, I can recommend a website called songster.com. That's songster spelled with two R's at the end. Um, that's the one I use to learn prequel to the sequel, as well as maybe a couple other songs. And um, for the most part, the tabs seem to be very accurate on that site. But again, even so, always be very critical. Use your ears and, and compare it to the actual track. And just make sure it actually fits. Don't just assume it's going to be right. Now for all of these methods, it's really important that you figure out what tuning the band is using. Now thankfully with the power of the internet, it's very easy to do um, a quick search and figure out what tuning a certain band uses. And most of the time, an artist will use the same tuning for all of their songs. So for example, Kill Switch Engage, I'm about 99% sure that they use drop C tuning for all of their songs. So if I'm going to try to learn a Kill Switch Engage song, as long as I'm in drop C, I, I can make a good uh, educated assumption that the song is going to be in the same tuning and I'm going to be looking for notes based off of that. However, there are bands that do experiment with different tunings. So for example, a band like Periphery uses a lot of different tunings. And so I can imagine that would be very frustrating to try and learn one of their songs. If you can't figure out what tuning a band uses, again, through live footage, even if it's a different song, um, you can try to see what kind of chords they're playing. If they're playing their bar chords with single fingers like that, then you can guess that they're in drop tuning. Um, if they're playing regular bar chords like that, then they're probably in some kind of standard tuning. And then I usually try to listen for the lowest note that they hit, and that can kind of give you a hint if they're in drop D or drop C or even lower. And then if they ever play any kind of riffs with open strings, like listen closely to that open string, then you can kind of figure out, okay, one of the strings is tuned to that, and make an educated guess how the guitar is tuned based off of that assumption. So if you try all these methods and none of them seem to be available to you and all else fails, you can always just do things the old-fashioned way and use your ear. Again, you can go to YouTube and look up the song, even if it's just the, uh, the track, and you can still use the slow-mo feature to slow down the audio and listen closely and try to pick out the notes. I still think that this is a skill that you can exercise and is something worth trying to do, um, maybe even for simpler songs, just trying to use your ears and really listen. I typically listen for the lowest note I can hear. That gives me an idea of what the root note is. I can kind of base the chord off of that. I think that's a really important skill, or at least a really useful skill as a musician to, to exercise and learn because it's going to help you in musical situations when you need to figure something out. You can figure it out quicker if you have a good ear for that kind of thing. But there you go. Those are the tools and techniques that I use when trying to learn a difficult song. What is the hardest song that you know how to play? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. For me, it's probably coldly calculated design by The Faceless. Um, Telos by Between the Buried and Me is another very difficult song. But anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Until next time.